but it's called Pete Stays Inside. It's an interactive play for young children and it's about bears and <laughs> there's a particular bear called Pete having to stay home. <coughs> Home was a book um, we created to help children talk about their lockdown anxieties. Um, so Cara and I um, came up with the idea and produced it really quickly during the first lockdown when it happened back in May, June last year when everything really, really, when the schools shut, I think particularly. Um, and we weren't sure how long things were going to go on for. So we worked really fast and uh, to try and bring it out so that when kids, we thought went back to school in September, we'd have something to help them talk about the, the time they'd had away. But actually, obviously, it's uh, been a lot longer now and still very relevant. It's just amazing seeing Pete Stays Home come to life. It was, um, it was a, a lockdown one project for me and it offered a bit of sanity for me and also something positive to come out of what was happening at the time. I kind of never could have dreamed that it would be made into this. The theatre group contacted Cara through our website and they started talking and yeah they basically took the story um, with our permission of course and turned it into a show for kids. Got an email from Tristan um, saying we love the book we'd, we'd like to do something with it so it sort of all stemmed from there really um, and then it started as a sort of small idea of, of workshopping and things and then Renata became involved to, to write it and, it and it became this wonderful musical theatre, which is very exciting. Pete Stays Home has been a really exciting project for us to develop. First of all, discovering a book that was written by a local author who lived down the road from me, which came out at such a prescient time in the first lockdown. And I've actually got a three-year-old son. He's nearly four now, but I read the book with him early on in the lockdown, everyone being at home, homeschooled stage. And it was genuinely a really lovely way to talk about the time we're living through in an accessible way with a very small child who probably didn't grasp the whole situation. I'm Renata, Renata Allen, and I've been asked to, well, I was asked in January to adapt the book and make it into a piece for the stage for little children. So that's what I did. We've got this amazing people, piece of work with such beautiful illustrations has emerged from our locality. Um, so the idea to look at an adaptation, which we'd never done before, we'd never taken a children's book and turned it into a play, um, it just kept going round and round in my head when we were you know, immediately responding to the pandemic and moving things online and working out different ways we could serve our community without being in spaces together. Pete Stays Home kept going round and round. But I suppose for me, it was always something that we had to present at the time when we emerged from lockdown so people could reflect on the time that we've lived through. Uh, as it happens, we've emerged and gone back and emerged and gone back several times. Um, but I think it's going to feel really kind of profound and moving to, to take it into all these schools and different settings and have people respond to it. It just feels so of the moment. In terms of finding a playwright to then adapt it, I'd worked with Renata uh, as an actor a few years ago, uh, developing a storytelling show, and I learned so much from her in terms of how you make a piece of theatre that can adapt and evolve and change with its audience, but still has 
enough structure and enough sense of um, interaction and music to kind of keep very small children engaged. Um, and I just, I've always been a huge fan of the work that she makes. It's genuinely works for kind of babies on laps right through to their grandparents. So it just seemed a match made in heaven and without wanting to sound too full of myself, I think one of the things I've got really right with this project is drawing together the right people. I've done lots of children's work um, way back when um, I started, when, in fact when my kids were tiny I started writing for children, wrote pantomimes, I wrote for the Oxford Playhouse, I wrote some big shows, I've written little shows for the Story Museum, I'm often writing for children but always um, theatre pieces, not, not books. We wanted this to be a piece for families which was inclusive and wasn't going out you know into commercial spaces to make a lot of profit or reach a very middle class theatre audience but it was genuinely to be made by and for the community and that was very much the only stipulation that Cara made. I think it's special for two reasons. One, because the book's special to me, but also because children have been at home for so long, not able to experience things like this. You've got lots of kids who were sort of five, six year olds who have never seen anything like this because they haven't been at the age where they've got the opportunity. So my kind of first reaction on seeing it was just sheer excitement that children are going to get to experience this and actually have something that they can really relate to in it as well. So they've got the joy of watching the theatre and then an experience they've really lived um, that, that they're going to, to see come alive. Now if you were human and had to dent down it wouldn't be quite the same. There'd be homework and worksheets and lessons to learn and humans have things called video games. Pete Stays at Home is a show all about this bear called Pete, of course, uh, and he uh, loves playing outside with his best friend Coco and his uh, grandparents, Grandpa Bear, which is me, and Nan. Um, and uh, uh, then a storm comes and autumn comes around and suddenly he has to go into his den uh, with his mum, which is great. And they're, they're like really excited for this. But then over time, it gets a little bit boring. Mum pokes a hole through the den so uh, he can talk to, so Pete can talk to Grandpa Bear for a little bit. Pete, ah! are you there? That's Gramps. I can hear his voice. Your clever mum has found a way that we can talk to each other, Pete. How are you? I'm all right. Oh, it's been good being with mum, but I'm missing all of my friends. I just want to go outside. Yes, it, it is hard getting through this long winter and not seeing your friends. But then the storm goes uh, and summer comes uh, and they can go outside again. And we see Pete getting really excited, going out with his friends again, playing again, doing what he loves. message is really to encourage them to talk about their experiences in in lockdown and um, and talk about how they felt about it all because it's not you know not a, a normal situation obviously and um, you know how it help them to deal with it I think Pete has to go into the den and sleep for a while and when he comes out of the cave the world is changed and he's feeling a little bit anxious um, about, you know, coming out and restarting interactions with people and the world. So there is a parallel in the narratives where, you know, children may be feeling slightly anxious and unsure as to how rebuild those connections. And Pete is quite a young character so he's meant to mirror what the kids may be feeling and will be feeling at this time. Go, go! Where are you? Gotcha! Oh. 
Well, I hope they're all quite different. I love playing Coco because she just likes to play and um, she's quite fierce and she likes to eat treats and yeah, that's great fun to play. <laughs> Pete has this phase where he goes like this. And I find myself just talking to people in the shops and be like, thank you. <laughs> just going into bear mode. And we use quite a lot of Makaton in the show. And that also becomes natural to, to be talking to people and just signing everything. So yeah, got to shake, shake the character off. I think when when I'm playing the character of Grandpa Bear, I like to I do like to think about sort of what the the um, what that effect has on um, elderly people as well, and elderly people in COVID, uh, because obviously elderly people had to stay in for quite a lot more time, had to go into lockdown before a lot of other people uh, to stay safe uh, whilst COVID was going on. Nan and I must stand down now. We'll get through the winter somehow. Time will bring us warmer weather. A few more weeks and we'll all be together. Bye bye, Pete. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Gramps. See you all in spring. I think everyone can recognise the, the um, the bears going into hibernation as as lockdown and can identify with Pete and how he feels when he's told all of a sudden he has to stay inside, he can't see anyone, he can't see his friends. I'm sure that will ring true for all the children that um, that will be seeing the show because it it's confusing and, and it's, it's a difficult time and it's difficult for parents. Mum in this show, Mama Bear, finds it quite hard to keep Pete entertained and happy and I'm sure that's been parents stories up and down the country over over the lockdown so um, yeah I think it will really ring true. Yes, a badger! A badger! Grandpa, the other badger! Okay, this is my best badger impression. Oh. I'm Jess and Today, we were watching a segment of Pete Stays Home. Everything we make at CTC is co-made with young people. Sometimes that means it's a massive community show with 30 people, 30 young people, in, you know, working alongside professional actors and a professional creative team to make something. A lot of the time, the idea comes from them and we bring in professionals to bring their ideas to life. I suppose this one is slightly different because it's made for such a younger age group. And although we do work with schools a lot and we have after school clubs and we even had early years sessions running before the pandemic as well, um, this idea very much came from uh, me and my three-year-old uh, and was taken to them. But for them, I think it's been a really enriching, interesting experience for them to explore what making inclusive theatre for any age entails. So they've been involved at every step of the process. Uh, they did a first read through of a draft of the script and gave their feedback on that, uh, which led to further rewrites between Renata and I. They also uh, did a workshop with Josh and I on creating the music, which was done over Zoom. So we did music sessions over Zoom, which is things that, again, can sometimes potentially go quite wrong, but was incredibly fr fruitful. And they co-wrote lyrics to two of the songs. Um, so it was a really lovely experience to then when we've been able to bring the cast in and get back in the room and share the work we're making, have them get involved in creating movement sequences, which are going to feature in the show, uh, but also hear their own lyrics that they've created. And I saw lots of them smiling and nodding at each other when their lyrics came up. Um, so it feels like they've got real ownership of the show uh, in the way that I hope our audiences who are connected to the local creatives who've made the piece will feel the same way. I come here every week as part of the Monday sessions and I've been a part of Pizza's Home since uh, early lockdown because we were developing songs for it and stuff. So yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> it's a bit of development they've been doing on it. We've been helping with them in some places. So we were watching the rough start of it, still scripted and everything. But um, yeah, give feedback and just help in general. <laughs> We did a couple of um, workshops during lo lockdown to do with it, but then this is the first 
I've actually seen of it in person, so it looks really good so far. Mom, what's happening? The storm is starting, Pete. You can't oh, stay outside anymore. I can't reach you. Come on, Pete. Oh, Back to the den. Mom, what's happening? We have to get home. Oh. Oh. We'll see you later, Dad. Goodbye, you two. I absolutely love just the, the whole storm scene because uh, all the young people got to develop moves for that and then I really liked the um, the songs in it as well. They were very good, Particular, particularly <laughs> Rock, Claw, Leaf, I believe it's called. <laughs> I hope they'll be fun, I hope they'll be enjoyable. Um, hope I can go see them as well, it'll be lovely. Uh, yeah, I hope it all goes to plan. <laughs> and I think everyone will enjoy it. This is the first time I saw this particular script come to life and um, yeah, it's been a wonderful day. It's been really, really so nice because so often you come to see things you've written and you're a bit Oh, that's not quite a, what I imagined really, or I, I thought maybe they'd do this with it. But this time it was just a delight. I just smiled the whole way or laughed the whole way through it and was really, really pleased. For us it was amazing because we got to experience the show with an audience for the first time. So really great to see what works, what doesn't work, and also to, to listen to their reactions at the end and their feedback saying, yeah, this is the happiest that I've ever been. and. You know, I know this will sound really exaggerated, but it reminded me of being a child again. It was, it was really lovely. I feel so lucky because this team are amazing. I'm not particularly uh, musical as such, but Josh and Inesh and Tristan are all so musical. They can create, they write lyrics, they play hundreds of different instruments and they're also very patient and very very forgiving so they've really helped me to um, to join in with the musical elements of the show which has been uh, just glorious um, and, and thrilling and um, yeah and we've really I think we've really gelled as a as a team I love the playfulness of Pete um, really being realised so completely by Inish. I just thought that was a wonderful job of, of really getting into the mind of a child and, and how they feel about things. Because I, I think they're, what's lovely about children is they have so many complicated emotions and she seems to capture all that, all the, all the different things that a child can feel. And naughty things, good things, you know, all the, all the fears, the excitement. And she just has such a range. I was absolutely delighted. And I thought, you know, the music was lovely and Josh had obviously done a brilliant job with them all but he I think had been instrumental um, in, in creating a lot of that music and I thought it was gorgeous and I think the relationship that Jenny managed to make as mom, as a friend, as all these different relationships as grand, fantastic. So I was, I was just thrilled. I honestly was just totally happy with what I saw. It was really exciting. I think as a director when you bring your writers into the rehearsal room there's always a feeling of oh have I served you? Have I made something that is going to reflect what you are imagining? So you always feel a little bit nervous uh, and they've never met each other. So really exciting for them to, for me to have brokered this relationship. Um, but they both seem to really feel genuinely pleased and to enjoy being five again and <laughs> interacting with the actors. But also it was lovely to see them chatting to each other and finding that they've got lots in common as well. So. Again, I feel like it was a real happy accident of bringing the right people together for a project. But it's so different, isn't it? Because especially a, a, a little, you know, for little ones, the pictures are everything, really. I mean, there's lovely text, but the, the pictures and that's what all the imagination goes into visualising through the pictures. Whereas on the stage, you've got to make those pictures happen. And because it is for little ones, my concern was very much to make it something even... It's not a complicated story, but not to, to make the... Comp you know, the complications as few as possible, but to make the action as fun as possible as well. So I introduced a lot of games. It says in the book that he loves playing with his friends. So I just thought, okay, let's go for games. Let's go for a whole load of different games that um, Pete might enjoy playing.
Oh, no, let's play it, please. This is the first time I've seen anything today, so um, I was really fortunate to see the script that Renata had written. Um, and I, I got to look through that. And then the illustrator, Kim, has been involved in sort of visuals and things like that. But I haven't seen anything other than snippets on social media until today. So it was really nice to, to just come along and, and feel part of it and feel excited by it. I think the next stage will be to really polish the transitions and um, look at the music and how do we make all of the transitions really smooth so there isn't a lot of gaps because that's when we normally tend to lose the children's attention. Um, yeah. The first performances were in Early Years Centre, so we're working with the brilliant welcome, Sunshine welcome. Centre, who we've worked with a bit before, and we're also working with East Street Centre in Grimsbury, that's a new partnership, uh, so we're really excited to go there and meet the families there. Um, that's going to feel incredibly magic because these are all children under five, and so for many of them it will be their first experience of theatre, uh, which I just know I'm going to get goosebumps seeing them interact with the show. Uh, the schools, we're going to Banbury and Vista schools. We've got a very packed schedule over two weeks, actually. We're fitting in lots. On some days we're going to one school in the morning and another one in the afternoon, pitching up in playgrounds um, and bringing the kids out there to kind of again experience that live theatre that they've really not been able to engage with anywhere for such a long time. The thing I'm most looking forward to about the live shows is that feeling of we're going to go from being uh, just the three actors and we're going to be like we'll, ha we'll have warmed up and we'll be ready to go and we'll be like yeah let's do it come on let's do it and then we'll be back behind the stage or me and Nan will be in front of the stage and then we'll hear the children's voices from far off coming through the doors. And just that sound for me is the thing that I'm most excited for. Just that sound. I love hearing all of the little bits that children, all of the things that children say when they come in, such as, you know, oh, there's a, there's a keyboard. There's a, there's a big rock there. I wonder what that big rock could be. Uh, I, yeah, there's, there's something really exciting about that and also, just seeing how they interact with the show. There's a really fun bit at the start of the show where there's some loop music going on. So I loop some music on the keyboard and, uh, and Nan goes around and she says, what, what sounds could we have in a forest? And we create this forest soundscape. No, it's a little bit quiet in the forest. It is, it is, Grant. Perhaps we need some sound. Welcome to our forest. Do you like our lovely trees? Grant is going to give us some sound. Of course, we're asking the children. So the people that we've had in so far watching the show, it's been really fun hearing them try and come up with what sounds we could have. And then me trying to recreate those sounds. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm up for a challenge. I'm ready for them to make it difficult. What other sounds do you think we could have in our forest? Can you think of anything else you might hear? Any animals or? Monkeys. Monkeys. Can we have some monkeys in our forest, Grant? We can have some monkeys. <laughs> That interaction with the children, hearing them laugh and really get into it, I'm really excited for. It's going to be a brilliant, such a good feeling. The, the main point of the, of the show is the interaction with the, the children. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to, to playing to a, a live audience and seeing what they make of it and seeing what suggestions they come up with. They're absolutely integral to, to make, the, make the show work. Yes, I'm very curious to, to see it now with little ones reacting to it. I think what's lovely about it is even if they can't understand everything, there's so much to enjoy just physically or, or musically. Um, but, uh, but there is also a story to follow and an emotional journey to follow and I think some of them will get that very strongly and yeah, I've, I've been really curious to see how they're going to respond and how much they'll interact and what they'll do with the actors and how much, you know, how playful they'll be, yeah. So the schools have already been briefed on a number of things before this show happens. So uh, the first thing is they're going to draw a picture which goes on the set, which I think is a really nice idea. Uh, to, to have that, that thing that the school that we go to, each school has drawn a picture which will go on the set wall. Uh, so there's a couple of other things that they've been briefed on. The next thing is they're writing a letter to Pete 
um, that, it, that is a way of, of helping Pete get through uh, being stuck inside his den. And I think that's really nice because children can draw from their experiences of, of being locked down themselves. And there's a really nice, uh, that there, hopefully there's some really nice moments where we hear about what children have been doing in lockdown. I just love that pop-up nature of what CTC have really started to do in the last couple of years, which is bringing theatre into often green spaces, removing any barriers that people might have with, with kind of more traditional theatre spaces and reaching new audiences, making the shows free, making them inclusive and accessible for anyone to enjoy. And so going into schools where you can reach anyone just seems like the perfect home for this show. Hello, hello, it's nice, nice to, to see you here. here. Hello, hello, it's nice, nice to see you here. Hi, I'm Jill Edge, I'm manager of the Sunshine Centre and with some of our children and families we've been watching Pete Stays Home, an amazing play. I'm Michelle, I'm Senior Outreach Worker at the Sunshine Centre, so I've helped to organise this um, today and um, it's been great and I loved the fact that there was signing as well as the words and I think the families have really enjoyed themselves. We loved it, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. They engaged brilliantly. I think they they obviously some of them were only two and it's hard to sit for a 50 minute show um, but you know we were pleasantly surprised that they were able to do that and I think they will learn huge amounts from watching it when they go home and talk to their parents about what they've seen. Who was the bear called? Yeah, I think that you could see how happy the children were. They just was full of it. But they did completely engage and obviously they all got up. They wasn't sort of too, you know, phased at getting up and dancing and joining in when asked to. So it was lovely, really nice to see. What was your favourite bit? Mm, the singing. Oh, the singing? <gasps> what was your favourite song? Who's going to win? The what one? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? You or me? Time to find out. One, two, three. This story is absolutely amazing. It's, you know, the most easiest way to get the point across. Um, and I found it quite emotional, actually. I think the little ones were loving it. They were interacting and I loved the keep fit bit. That just made me roar. Yeah, they were they were joining in. Well, they found Grandma and Gramps before uh, they were meant to, which is really <laughs> funny. And I think you know they they uh, really sort of engaged with the the performance. I think they concentrate. I mean, they were fixated on it. There was there was no misbehaviour no. or children getting up. It really held their attention. They were really into it, don't you think? Quite an age range as well, from yeah. babies to your your four year olds. So I think they all did very well. It's great to see them get up and get really involved and I think they moved with the mood of the music and everything. There were sort of sad bits for them to sit down and be quiet and thoughtful too and bits to get excited and play together and it was nice to see sort of lots of people coming together and having fun which is obviously not something we've seen a lot of um, during the last kind of year so it was really it was really lovely to see them go through all the range of emotions <laughs> really it was good. They were and so good with the children really good eye contact and as Michelle has already said that sign in we use sign in a lot so that sign in just made it for us yeah and they really engaged with the children because this is this age range sometimes their concentration can go quite quickly but I think because of how they put across the performance it really kept the children focused which was really, really good, good really good yeah and I've also witnessed some of them already doing some of the songs and the actions so that they've got that going round in their head which is you know yeah very good very and brown good. bear song was my favorite <laughs> <laughs> do it then brown bear <laughs> i'm big brown and hairy and some people find me 
he's scary. I'm a brown bear. He's a brown bear. But I'm really soft and cuddly, got a taste for the honey. I'm a brown bear. He's a brown bear. Some people stop and ask me, Gramps, tell me why. Do you sleep all through the day? Well, I reply, because I'm a brown bear. He's a brown bear. Because I'm a brown bear. Oh, yeah. I think what's nice in this show and kind of all of our practice with young people is it's always about accepting ideas. So we've built in a lot of bits in the show, whether it's right at the start where they are able to suggest sounds you might hear in the forest and whatever they say, even if it's a snail we had one time, you'll accept it and you'll go, OK, here's a close up of a snail. <laughs> and that's an exciting moment for them because they know they've, they're able right from the start to kind of influence the show. Don't you agree? It's a constant game of yes, let's. Isn't it is, it? yeah. Yes, it is. let's. <laughs> and you can choose you can choose when it's not right because in the schools what's been different is their hands go up yeah. and sometimes it might feel right and appropriate to go oh what do you think or organically for example when you're asking who's going to play the music they're all pointing and you're like oh who, who are you pointing to and they're gramps and it and it works beautifully yeah. um, so there's it's definitely been enriched at different points hasn't it by different bits of unexpected interaction yes it has <laughs> definitely yeah I'm Andrew McHugh, uh, Councillor Andrew McHugh. I'm a Chill District Councillor um, and I'm one of the lead members for communities. And so we're very keen to support things like this and getting people back to normal. What was nice about today was uh, I found a lot of moments you could really like, they would be looking at you and if you looked at them, they'd carry on looking at you. They were so confident, they I were. thought, mm. really confident, yeah. And I love how they interact with even like the songs. So in the Butterfly song, Pete asks lots of questions, doesn't he? They answer them. And they answer the questions through the song, yeah. yes, yeah. no, yeah. yes. And that's and really lovely. unexpected, isn't it? It shows that they're absolutely yeah. listening to it, listening to the lyrics. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's never mentioned that it's anything like a global pandemic that we live through. But there's obvious kind of gentle, subtle parallels that you can draw, whether that's... And what's really nice is seeing it at, um, in schools, you see the kids' raw experience reflected and you see them responding to uh, Pete's dilemmas. And then at a park, you see the parents and the grandparents. And there's, uh, today I've looked out and I've seen a couple of people hugging their kids a bit, a bit tightly or perhaps, you know, wiping away a tear as they kind of reflect on the 18 months that we've all lived through. So it's got those kind of timely parallels. But I also think it's probably going to be relevant for a long time. I mean, in some sad ways, I think, because we're going to be living with this um, pandemic for a fair bit longer. But also, I think it's about play and family and friendship, and those things will, will always feel really relevant. <laughs> Oh, I think they really loved it. They really responded well. They joined in. We even had the adults on their feet, you know, playing musical statues and being silly with us. So it was wonderful. They were absolutely brilliant. It's an outdoor show. So we decided we wanted it to do it outside with the four elements, whatever the weather, and we've survived. The lovely thing about today is a lot of people booked to see the show, but also a lot of people just walked up and wanted to join in. And even when the show started, a lot of people kind of gravitated this way and sat down at a safe distance and, and kind of enjoyed it. And to me, I think the word the arts is such a kind of loaded term and a lot of people think theatre is maybe not for them. But what this show's demonstrated in this part this afternoon is that it is for everybody. It's inclusive and it's welcoming and gentle and 
kind of community spirited so um, for us I think taking work into interesting places is also exciting for the young people involved we've done theatre at um, you know in a castle at Broughton Castle or in a decommissioned nuclear bunker we made a show in a pancake house and every time it's a new unique experience for the young people that take part and something that they'll really treasure and remember um, and parks are just always beautiful because they are communal spaces that people come to to relax and so they already feel like a, a kind of glorious low pressure environment to bring some theatre that, that gently brings people in so I'm up for parks I like marketplaces um, I love school fields it's been amazing to take this show onto school fields at a time when you you know you can't um, perform indoors safely uh, this show is looks because it's about the outdoors and it's about you know, celebrating together in the, in the fresh air. It's looked lovely in every green space that we take on to. Really. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Go on, Pete. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get it. <laughs> Oh, good one! Whoa! I think my favourite part of the show has to be the butterflies in my tummy song. It gets me every time. I think it, I well up every time I hear it. Uh, and I love seeing the actors respond to each other on it as well. It just always feels so tender and sensitive and it always kind of touches a nerve and I really hope that the audiences feel that way. I really love the Butterfly song because A is a brilliant song, so, so beautifully written and it's just the, the rawness and the truthfulness in it um, about how we are all feeling about you know, feeling anxious and scared of, of how to come out into the real world and almost relearn how to connect and, and be. The world tells me to run, but I've got butterflies in my tum. Because a step outside the door seems so much harder than before. And now my sleep is over, the world has grown much older. I'm scared of going outside to see I hope my friends will be waiting there for me oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I think that was um, it made you reflect on the 18 months that we've we've had you know, it really brought it home how bad things have been but now hopefully we're coming out the end of it and you know, moving forward with life I think I just really liked seeing all the kids get involved in games together and playing together and really getting up and getting involved um, and it was very nice at the end when there was the song about coming out that was a bit more about the anxieties of coming out of lockdown when the children sort of calmed down a bit and went a bit quiet and hopefully that will be a moment that they get to talk about later um, maybe when they're you know when they get home it, it's something nice to reflect on anyway which is kind of what we wanted with the book in the first place so i had a good time it was lots of fun <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part was uh, games i had a good time uh, the only thing i wasn't quite so keen on is having to do press-ups <laughs> what was your favorite bit the bubbles? <laughs> the bubbles. The bubbles. <laughs> it was very sweet and very nice and I think the kids enjoyed it. Fab. Fantastic. Oh, Wonderful. Their facial expressions, their voice was clear. Yeah. I spent most of my time laughing at them because they were so engaging. Cherbourg Theatre Company, what a great team, what a great message. If you get a chance, come and see them. Excellent, absolutely excellent. Can't fault them. Um, talked to Tristan and we're hoping to do lots of projects in the future. We've, we're creating a community room here at our setting and hoping to do lots of like storytelling and that with them in the future. Yeah, it's amazing. He's been brilliant start to finish. You can't fault them. And the whole team was absolutely amazing. 
I'd love to see more stuff like this in Banbury. What's really nice is uh, the children have just been through this kind of quite difficult time that Peter's going through and so they've kind of had to like learn learn how to keep themselves active and how to stop themselves from getting bored and what's really nice is now in the show it allows them to tell Pete how to do that and what that's what's really nice about that is that shows that the children have actually learnt you know how to not get bored and how to stay active and uh, and all the things that you can do at home and that it that uh, and they've kind of learnt how to be empathetic towards uh, other people who are like that and i think that's a really nice thing to be able to give them a really nice skill to offer we have worked closely with Cherwell theatre company before and it's always fun and a good time for the children to use their imagination. Who knows where Pete's going to go next? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's just really nice at this stage that it's, it's being seen by children. Um, the book's been read by so many children. Um, we also did a thing um, with um, Action for Children over Christmas as well, where we got the, the book out into lots of um, their centres and things. So it's been read by so many children um, and, and hopefully will continue to be read. A lot of work has been done in schools as well. Um, and I know Chairwell Theatre Company are doing more work in schools. It was really important to us that it wasn't just the book, that it came with resources to help children really talk about what they'd experienced um, and talk about positive and negative, because I think that's really important as well. Pete in the story has, has a nice time at home in the end, but that doesn't always the case. And actually what the book has led to is whether it be positive or negative, the children really being able to talk about their time at home and their different experiences um, and what they remember from it. So that was really key to us to, to have that extension where it offered a bit of sort of well-being support for children as well. It just feels like everything is aligned really perfectly. Really good. I love the three shows. We are absolutely tired, <laughs> but it's been so much fun. The audiences are gorgeous. It's really great to perform for a different range of ages as well. And the adults get a few jokes that perhaps some kids in the school yeah, don't get. So it's been but, you know, amazing. excited. It's been so lovely. You kind of end on a, we finished on a high, I think. I guess where I'd like to see us go is with the ideas and aspirations of our young people. Um, I think when I took over the company, I did, first encountered them as an actor and I'd just never come across an organisation like CTC that had young people so firmly at the centre of everything they do. And that's genuinely what makes it magic. So I have got a couple of ideas of things we might develop next year and some stuff that we've been working on for a long time, which might finally come to fruition. But what's really exciting is that I know some of the next big things that are going to happen are going to come for the young people and none of us know what they are yet. Go home now. <laughs>